the search for ancient creatures. Paleontology studies the history of life through fossils versus archaeology study of human life and culture. Paleontology, the term, originates from Greek, ancient creature study. Buried in the sedimentary rocks of the Pennsylvania Earth lie the skeletal remains of our ancient past. Over 500 million years old, the first life on Earth can still be found today. In this episode, I travel to the solitary foothills of the endless mountains region of Pennsylvania to search for the prehistoric life forms of our region's past. Come up with some even better specimens. Growing up, my mom was always fascinated with geology and fossil hunting. She was always involved in local rock and mineral clubs and would volunteer to teach Boy Scouts at the Pennsylvania State Museum. She would often take me, my brother, and dad out to remote quarries and forests to search for buried fossils and geological treasures. I would typically just marvel at the sights and sounds of nature while they would search and dig. So I never really paid much attention to what she was searching for. I remember when she first found a trilobite and showed it to me. She was explaining why the find was so fascinating and the age of the creature. All I could think about was the SETI eel from Star Trek II with the Wrath of Khan. And the face hugger from Alien. But it turns out that H.R. Geiger's alien creatures were actually inspired by fossils from the same Paleozoic era as the trilobite. My mom explained that if you want to find a specific fossil, then you have to search for deposits that were left behind by specific errors of that creature's life. I wanted to find either a face-eating crinoid or a Star Trek mind control trilobite. The trilobites began to decline during the Devonian period, so we headed towards that area of the state. back in the Devonian tribe, the time, and um, we're looking for fern fossils, uh, tree bark fossils from the Lipidodendron, and even the, um, the roots of that tree, you can find fossils of that. You get a pick, <laughs> and uh, you start digging through the, 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 the mounds that are here. This area was, uh, these are coal spoils from a coal mining uh, company. So we have a lot of things within those dirt mounds. So you want to get your pick out and you want to pick out the rocks and stones out of the mound and then carefully check them. I brush them off with this little brush and you'll be able to see if you have a, a good impression. My mom follows in the footsteps of another female fossil hunter. Mary Anning was born in 1799 and became known around the world for the discoveries she made in Jurassic marine fossil beds and the cliffs along the English Channel in southwest England. As a woman, she was not eligible to join the Geological Society of London, and she did not always receive full credit for her scientific contributions. However, her friend, geologist Henry de la Beck, who painted Duria Antiquor, the first widely circulated pictorial representation of a scene from prehistoric life, based it on fossils Annie had found and sold prints of it for her benefit. More likely, if there is something in there, it will, it will split open because the, the, the fossil had decayed the organic material away and it left a little cavity in there, so that is a weak part of the rock now. As we took a break to have lunch and check out the nearby overlook, my mother and I discussed the differences between paleontologists and archaeologists. I made the statement that paleontologists would never be as cool as archaeologists. I referred to my childhood hero, fictional archaeologist Indiana Jones. Our debate eventually forced me to start researching online later that night. Apparently, Indiana Jones' character is believed to be based on a real-life paleontologist, Roy Chapman Andrews. 
Andrews was born 1884 and died in 1960. He was an American explorer, adventurer, and naturalist who became the director of the American Museum of Natural History. He led a series of expeditions through China into the Gobi Desert and Mongolia. Among many other discoveries, these expeditions brought the first known dinosaur eggs to the museum. His popular writing about his adventures made him famous. Andrews joined the Explorers Club in 1908, four years after its founding. 1909 and 1910, Andrews sailed on the USS Albatross to the East Indies. 1913, he sailed aboard the Schooner Adventurers to the Arctic. 1922, he discovered a fossil of a gigantic hornless rhinoceros. The species was named after him. First nest full of dinosaur eggs ever discovered. 1942, he retired to North Colebrook, Connecticut, where he wrote most of his books about life and adventures. So apparently, paleontologists are pretty cool. Um, you see that there's a lot of uh, marine life in here, shell fossils, but what is really intriguing about this is there's a huge trilobite head here. Uh, this is where the eye was on this side, and of course this eye over here is broken off so you can't see it. And this is just the head part, uh, this is where the, the bottom of the body would have been right here. We didn't find a face hugger or a mind control wrath of con eel, but that isn't what really matters. I realized that my mom's lifelong hobby is pretty cool, and her dragging me out searching for rocks and fossils as a child is what instilled my sense of adventure and love of the outdoors. Here's to my mom and a life of adventure. Better be.